the radio guy, Mike Prince. Welcome to another episode of the Mike Prince Show here on the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Of course, our mission is to come to you each and every day with fresh content. Today would be no exception to the rule. We have a special guest, uh, might I say, rising star to the network here at the Open Mic Broadcast Network, and that is none other than Robbie Rob Butler of the Southland Report. How are you doing today, my friend? Oh, I'm I'm pretty good. Just uh, practicing my social distancing and uh, staying healthy, things of that nature. How are you? Man, I'm doing real good. I hope the family is all well and everybody is staying safe out of harm's way. We are absolutely. I'm. Uh, I'm we we don't know when this thing is is going to be over with. Uh, you know, we all we can do is just uh, pray and 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 uh, live one day at a time. Absolutely. Now I know you're a huge football fan, in particular that of the Southland Conference. Uh, life's been pretty interesting without the talk of spring football, huh, Rob? Well, absolutely, but, uh, you know, with, with, all this, with all this going on, and, uh, you know, you and I have, have talked about it before, that uh, at some point we would like to see, uh, see, maybe see an FCS Group of Five merger, and uh, that, that all, that, uh, Depends on you know the Power Five just doing their own thing and 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 making their own league, but uh, I believe like uh, right off the top of my head, I think there's a handful of schools in the Southland Conference that could probably move up to FBS right now and and be successful. By successful, I mean six and six, seven and five, and making a bowl game. I think that they could pull it off right now, but. Uh, that's probably that's a dream a lot of FCS fans like oh when's my school gonna make it up to or gonna go to FBS and things like that but uh, I'm here to, if if you're a fan of Southwest Conference I'm here to tell you that uh, if you just hold tight just sit tight and just give it a few years maybe less that, uh, that uh, the Southland Conference could uh, could possibly be merged with the group of five and some variation. Well, let me ask you this, Rob, which uh, five teams that you may mention. Oh you man, you got to Oh wow, you put me on the spot now. No, I'll say one for sure. I think uh I think Sam could do it. Uh Sam's got a good enrollment and and you know, they've mentioned it before. Uh SFA, I don't know because you really don't you don't have any can't think any airports like uh you know, you, that's a must really. Um uh McNeese, I Nice is a smaller school, but the, uh, apparently their president has kind of alluded to maybe wanting to uh, move up at some point. So, and then if you got McNeese and uh, Lamar sixty miles away, uh, me personally being a fan, I would I would prefer that Lamar uh, tried to focus on becoming an elite FCS program, kind of like North Dakota State, uh, Fargo, North Dakota's. Uh, about like Beaumont in in, po in size population is like one hundred twenty thousand or so. So, you know, uh, things like that to consider. But uh, with the economy and the, the the way things are going and and you know how this thing plays out, I, I really do believe that we might see a a significant shift, a changing of the landscape of college football, and it, it might come sooner rather than later. Do you think Central Arkansas would do? I, I believe Central Arkansas could go would be seven and five would be successful as a uh, now they they were Division two they hadn't been up to Division one for uh, I don't since two thousand seven two thousand eight something like that but as soon as they made the jump they were uh, they were the best team in the Southland but they could not they couldn't win the title. Because they were, you know, there there's like some transition years or something like that in the bylaws. But uh, I believe Central Arkansas. If there's one team that could represent the Southland and Frisco this year, I would have to put my money on Central Arkansas. We're talking right now with Robbie Rob, consultant agent for the Open Mic Broadcast Network by way of the Southland Conference. Now, Rob, I'm going to uh, agree to disagree for content purposes in this manner. I think that um, the Southland Conference would be better suited to remain in an FCS 
with the restructured FCS, and I'll get to that in just a moment. Uh, part of the problems with the Group 5s, to me, they're in that nomad land because they will never be fully accepted by the Power 5. And right. all the money that they're pumping in the football, and we're going to stick just for football purposes on today's show, with all the money that they're pumping in the football, they would never be recognized as a champion on the FBS scale. Now, if bowl games are your main concern, then so be it. But if you want to be acknowledged as a champion, I think that FCS should focus on maximizing their opportunities that they have with a little restructured uh, frame, if you would. Me personally, I think some of the strain that our FCS counterparts are having into keeping that Division I status. Now, if the Power Fives are able to create their own island, let them do what they want to do, that's the world of money on top of money, and we know to each his own. We will just be forever outside looking in from that angle. But for those who remain, if you go from a minimum 14 teams to maybe a minimum eight teams to qualify for Division One FCS status, I think it could reshape and even restructure some of the budgets that are afforded these schools to be competitive and to make it very interesting in the FCS ranks. Well, I agree with that. Uh, I, you know, and and I don't. Uh, I'm kind of like you with the idea that you know that that FCS you have a an opportunity to win a championship, and if you you move up. I mean, if, if you're mixed in with uh, the group of five, then that your odds of ever winning a national championship just you know just decrease. So, with that in mind, uh, you know, it's a power five. Let's say they don't break off and, and do their own thing, and they just go to eight teams, and you get a group of five with a chance to be in there. Then that stays by itself, and then you keep FCS like it is, and maybe bring some up, some Division two schools. And uh, there you go. Nothing changes. You still have an opportunity to, to win a national championship at the FCS level. Right. And so the minimal sports that I think that all FCS budgets would be able to obtain and still have a strong competitive uh, edge would be, of course, football, men and women's basketball, baseball, softball, uh outdoor track and field, of course, men and women's division, I believe volleyball and soccer, and then you add bowling. I think that could be a very affordable platform for even the smaller FCS programs, and you could really have some dynamic competition across the board. I wholeheartedly agree with you on that, Mike. And uh, but the thing about it is, is that I'm worried that uh, with with this pandemic and what it's done to the economy and and so many unknowns that uh, that some of these uh, some schools are going to have to cut some non-revenue sports. It's uh, it's unfortunate, but I I just uh, a lot of unknowns right now. Yes, a lot of unknowns. But what you do is by cutting them you don't necessarily have to dissolve them completely. You would just make them more like club sports. So they could play within the community, some regional stuff, which would be a less restricted travel budget, and you could still get some things done. Uh, for example, and this is no knock on, on any of the said programs, but bowl, not bowling, but uh, golf, tennis, um, I, I don't see a lot of people pushing the panic button if those were converted over to club sports. Does that make sense? Uh, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I, I, I never played any intramural uh, sports at, in college. The semester I was at SFA, and then I went to Blend. But, uh, but yeah, that totally makes sense. And and uh, you don't necessarily uh, lose that competition you still have it i know sfa for a while did not have a baseball team a baseball program and and uh but they did have intramural and it, it was still you know it was still popular on campus right so uh there's going to be some restructuring of course now 
those smaller schools are already at what I call a slight advantage, but would appear to be a disadvantage from outside looking in when I'm talking about lack of TV revenue and a lot of sponsorship opportunities. Because they don't have the large television contracts and the big sponsorships, their money is contingent on student enrollment, subsidized uh, budgets from the state, and so forth. That makes up between 75 and 80% of their budgets. So they're not missing out on ticket sales per se. So with the enhanced restructure, which would create more regional games, you might even see a boost in ticket sales, which could add to the budget of these said institutions. Well, that sounds great to me, Mike. I just, uh, I'm just excited uh, once we get past this, and, and I do think that we will have football this fall. I don't know what maybe limited capacities or, or uh, I don't see a – I don't see us uh, playing football games without fans. I mean, if if the if we don't have if we can't have students on campus, and uh, uh, it, it's it I don't know what it looks like with uh, but we're gonna have fans in the stands at games. I mean, I, they've taken some polls, and and apparently the uh, a lot of people wouldn't be comfortable buying tickets to games this fall. But and but they have said that uh, basically that. They wouldn't mind watching it on TV without fans, you know. And and you need that television revenue. A lot of these uh, a lot of these schools, these athletic departments, <laughs> would possibly go under, you know, some of these programs if if we don't have a football season. Whether it's split in the fall and the spring, um, or we started in October, um, I do think that we will have a football season. Well, I know that the uh, chancellor, uh, John Sharp for Texas A&M, had made an announcement uh, just recently that if the seasons were to start in October, they could still get a 12-13 game season in without bye weeks, of course, for everybody to make the said revenue to help these programs, as you mentioned, stay afloat. Um, They've even talked about cutting out nine conference games especially more or less on the FCS level, to cut down on your travel expenses and create a more regional, global deal. Now, here's the $64,000 question, Rob. We're talking okay. about the six-foot social distance that is now being incorporated. How do you implement that on a football sideline, a basketball sideline, a baseball dugout, and even when players are competing? Uh, that's, that's a hard question to answer. I don't, uh, that's going to be difficult to implement. Uh, that's the only answer I have for you. That's, uh, that's almost, uh, almost impossible. Now, the only other alternative that I could think of right off the top of my head is you insert the M95 mask that these players put on in the gauge of competition to help minimize potential contamination to ensure that the games would carry on. So let's just say, for instance, with um, 100 football players on a, on a football team and you have a fresh mask for each game and perhaps practice, wow, that could get pretty expensive, I guess, as far as the mask are concerned, but it would be an alternative and just chalk it up as a new expense for operational costs. Well, yeah, that sounds like a viable alternative to me. I, uh, I, you know, I'm sure it's it's been talked about, or they're brainstorming right now, and and they're gonna think of something, some kind of ways to uh, to, uh get athletics in, at some point. Right, right. Now, here's another question for you, Rob. If you got a son or a daughter who's in collegiate or even high school athletics. Would you feel comfortable sending them out there to play right now? Oh man, that's uh, you know what? Uh, I that's a that's a tough question. I don't with uh with with testing and 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 uh 
things of that nature. Uh, I want to. I don't know, Mike. I just. Uh, I'm not a father, for one thing. So I. I'm, that's uh That's a difficult question. I w- I'm gonna have to say yes. I don't. Uh, with, I think that we'll develop a vaccine sooner rather than later. But uh, only with a vaccine, though. If not, then uh, you know, I don't uh, I don't know that it would be safe. I really don't. Right, and that and that's what I think the element that has been missing across the board. We've heard every angle except that of the parent. We've heard the institutions. We heard the NCAA. We heard from the fans, but we have yet to hear from the parents. And being a father of four, as much as I love sports, I i almost say that I breathe sports. I don't think I would feel comfortable allowing any of my children on any level to go out until we do have a said vaccine shot for this thing. So with that being said, regardless of all the separations and all of the other deals that we have going on, I would be hesitant to have my little ones go out there, man. I would have to wholeheartedly agree with you, Mike. I didn't mean to get you down, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't get me down. I, it's a good Friday. It, it's, nothing can right. get me down today. Right, right. But but it's just something that I think we need to think about, and I think we're so avid in in our sports, and we love our sports, and sports is the very essence and fiber of a lot of the things that we do from day to day in this country and throughout the world, and I don't think people have realized it until this very sad pandemic of the corona, I mean, corona, the coronavirus. (laughs) So there's a balancing act that needs to be heavily weighed before we move full steam ahead. I agree with you, Mike. We do need to find a vaccine for this, um, and, and I don't know what the timetable is for that. Some have said 12 months. Some they're doing uh, transfusion therapy now, and they're trying things out, and 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 uh, that may work or some alternative uh, form of medicine or something. But I, I'm not a doctor. I don't know. Uh, I can. Uh, I have faith that. Uh, that we'll get through this as a society, and 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 sports brings us together. But it's not, it's not the most important thing in the world. It's it, lives are more important, and um, if we have to uh, delay the season, or or maybe if we don't play football at all, it, it's it's that's uh, saving lives is more important. Yeah. Now, now, don't get too far off to the edge, my friend. Talk about no football <laughs> at all. Well, I don't think no. I don't. I, no, that's a word. That's a doomsday scenario. That's. Yes, but I, I don't see that. I, I, I don't think it'll get to that. But that's a worst case scenario. It is. And and right. and uh, uh, Mike Gundy, Oklahoma State coach, has said that uh, he has said something to the effect that that he thinks that everybody will be back by May first, and and uh, you know, and and people are saying like, well, I appreciate his medical advice, but uh, but that's. <laughs> But that's kind of that's uh I that I don't think we're gonna heed that. But that's that's kind of impossible, and it really is. It's um nobody knows when this is gonna be over with. But uh, I know that uh things will return to some sense of normalcy. When I don't know, but uh all we can do is hope and pray. Absolutely, and regardless if Mike Gundy stayed at a Holiday Inn. He's not a doctor, so people, please do not put all your no. hopes in his basket. I think he was really trying to be as optimistic as possible, and it may have come off the wrong way. Um, regardless of what people may think of him, he's a highly intelligent man, and I think he called himself trying to boost the morale of football nation on the college ranks and the state of Oklahoma. But he could have chosen a better choice of words. I would. Think. I think so too. I, I, I think he uh, he conveyed his message in in, a, in the wrong way. But I mean, I, I I see everybody's trying to be optimistic, and and uh, I can't fault him for that at all. Absolutely. We're talking with Robbie Rob Butler, 
the consultant of the Southwestern Athletic Conference by way of the Open Mic Broadcast Network. Rob, I got an assignment that you and I are going to discuss the next time we get together. It was involving your alma mater and a Southwestern Athletic Conference school in the likes of Mississippi Valley. And I'm dubbing it the one that got away from Valley and the one that you grabbed at the last minute. Some might add with a little help. <laughs> hey, well, I'll tell you what. I was at that game, Mike, and, uh, and yeah, I would love to do that project with you. And, and then I'll save my commentary for later. But I was at that game, and I know what you're talking about. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Look, Rob. I want to give you some closing thoughts and comments, man, as we get ready to shut this segment down of today's episode. Okay. Uh, here's the deal. I, I, I'm a fan of uh, the Southland Conference, and, and whatever happens in the future, uh, if the FCS merges with a group of five or if the Power Five just goes to eight in the playoffs and, and it stays like it is, Either way, it's a win-win situation because, you know, you there is a possibility of, of, of being that move up with the group of five if they did merge those two, and, and that'd be great. But uh, by the same token, if if, if uh, it stays the structure the way it is, then you have a, a greater opportunity to win a national championship and play in Frisco, and that's, that's what I, I really get excited about. So either way, it's a win-win, and uh, – I do believe that we will have football this season. I'm uh, I'm optimistic, and uh, and I'm still looking forward to it. All right, my friend. Well, you're not alone. We took a poll last week, and 81% of those involved with the poll agree with you, my friend, that we will have some shape, form of football in the 2020 campaign. I on the short end of that. I'm not as optimistic as you guys are, but I am keeping hope alive. I want to thank you very much, my friend, for joining in with us today. Rob Butler, consultant reporter for the Southland Conference by way of the Open Mic Broadcast Network. I must exit stage left. I am the radio guy, Dr. Mike Prince. Remember to follow us on our social media handles for Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at The Mike Prince Show. The YouTube channel is Open Mic Broadcast Network. Our website is obnradio.com and our 24-hour dial-in message line where you can call in, leave your questions, comments, or concerns are at 713-570-6736. And until the next time, you guys be blessed. We'll see you on the other side.